Hinda Barmini, welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. Today, I am chilling with uh, Wasim Karim, the CEO of Youth Development Agency, aka NYDA. Uh, you can tell I'm so nervous, man. I'm not used to speaking to such high-profile people. <laughs> oh, oh, please. <laughs> I'm the nervous one here. <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you doing? Cool. Good and you, Can man. we shake hands with the coronavirus? Or <laughs> what? What's going on? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I hear like the most of Europe is infected now here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm excited about this interview because uh, you and me are so alike. Uh, yeah. First of all, I love sports. I love traveling. Yeah. And also, I grew up in Limpopo. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where what sports are you into? Uh, by um, Njerere, Padzima. All right. In Venda. Okay. Do you know where that is? That's, that's far north, yeah. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> real north. The real north, yeah. And you? Uh, so, I grew up in Pulukwane. Yeah, yeah. There's an the Indian township called Nirvana there. There's an Indian township yeah. in Pulukwane? There is an Indian township. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I grew up with my grandparents there. Uh, yeah, and it's still home. Yeah. yeah. I try and go there as often as I can. When last were you there? Uh, probably about a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And sports yeah. what's you into? So I used to play a lot of football and cricket in school. Uh unfortunately as you get older your reflex starts slowing down. Yeah. Um, so these days I play softer sports like golf and squash. Uh do a little bit of running, a little bit of cycling. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. soccer? Tell me you're a man you fan. Uh, I'm a Liverpool fan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who knows? Apparently, the league might get called off because of coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine after thirty years. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, now I know you like traveling, and you went to New York in twenty eighteen, right? Yeah. Um, what other parts of the world have you visited? Um, so I've been on quite a few places. Uh, I've been to Thailand once. I've been to the United States. How is the US? I've never been to the USA. Oh, it's amazing. Everything's. I think you realize how Americanized our culture is um, because a lot of it you get there and you know already, right? I mean, because you see New York and LA in the movies um, and it's influenced the way we look at and think yeah. about things a lot, yeah. yeah. But uh, I guess you you really see what a real middle class looks like there um, mm. and they have this amazing ability to just upsell everything, you know, yeah. make everything a little bit bigger. So you kind of see why it's the world's biggest economy, yeah. um, there's just so many cities and it's so cosmopolitan, different nationalities, um, different types of people. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed it, you know. Um, I think we have our own misconceptions about their culture yeah. um, and they have misconceptions about our culture. Yeah. So it's good to, to get to know a yeah. little bit different side of people. And what other countries would you like to uh, travel to? Sure. So I have a, I have a little baby these days. Um, yeah. It's not as easy to travel with a baby <laughs> as people. Um, yeah, but I mean, I've always wanted to, to go to China. Um, I think just like the way that society has evolved over time yeah. has been has been amazing. Yeah, and you know, being a football fan, to go to the World Cup one day would just be... Would be amazing. Out yeah. of this world, yeah. yeah. Uh, 2010 World Cup, that was pretty dope as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was, it was. And how was it like growing up in Limpopo? Uh, no, I mean, it was, it was interesting. Um I think you know we we were we didn't have a lot of money growing up, um, mm. and I joined the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, but my grandparents were were really nice people. They were anti-apartheid activists as well. So it was it was weird. Like sometimes Tabu and Beggy would come to our house. You know? Wow, yeah. are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was so I always grew up knowing a lot about the struggle and about the NC and things like that. You know, um, and. So I was politically aware from a young age. Yeah. Um, I I always enjoyed the laid back lifestyle um, that was associated with it. So that was that was a nice part about growing up, and I think that part has never really left me. You know, yeah. I have friends back there. Um, I like that. I like going home, and not having to switch on the TV, just chilling with a book. You know. Uh, yeah, it's like weird. I, when I go know, home, I never. Yeah. I'm never on my phone. Like never, I can go the right? whole day never, without yeah. being on my because phone because there's no signal. <laughs> <laughs> But, that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so so I enjoy that small town life. I enjoy the, the kind of thing where, you know, town is just five minutes away, you know, or you, in the evening you take a walk and you just bump into people you know, you know. Um, I really do enjoy that small town kind of lifestyle. <laughs> and is that why you wanted to be in a journalist, you know, when you're seeing people like Tabon Bake, you're on a random day when you wake up, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think the journalist thing was 
was always, I think the media influences a lot of the stuff what we do and having a free South Africa means it plays a big part in our lives, you know. Um, but yeah, English was probably one of the things I was good at at school. Uh, always enjoyed books a little bit. So I used to write well from a, from a young age. I never used to do a lot of things well, but that was one of the things I used to do well. So, um, and I think that kind of wanted, influenced me to want to write a little bit more, you know. Yeah. Um, and tell stories, right? Yeah, yeah. It's always about telling a story. Yeah? Yeah. And if you can be able to tell a story in an interesting way, you can get people to follow you. And people to listen to you. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So I think that was a little bit of the... So why don't you pursue it? Because like, when you're talking now, I can see you have so much passion. With I do, that. I do. So I think, you know, it's, it's complicated because, you know, they say if you're an Indian child growing up, you can be anything you want to be. Yeah. As long as it's a doctor, lawyer or company. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so so my dad said, my dad said, no problem. You can be a journalist, but you can be a journalist after you become an accountant. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I ain't paying your fees and then waiting for you to like you know, stay at home here. So so there's a little bit influenced by. It. But look, today I get to write. I write a weekly column. Oh, you know, nice. I get asked to write articles by magazines, you know, Financial Times. So yeah, that part makes it really interesting, you know. So I guess life is a funny way of working out. The way so. So when do you come to Joburg? Is it when you're studying at uh, University of Pretoria? Yes, yes. That's oh, so that's, that's, that's the first time you come yeah, 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 yeah. to the Big city, city called. Lights, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how was that like? Were you a clever student? Uh, I, was, I was okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I always used to have the right friends, you know? Those kind of people who, who have your back, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was nice about it. Yeah, and I did university here. Um, I joined the Progressive Youth Alliance, was all but involved in student politics at university. You know, you get to understand different perspectives of different people, yeah. you know. Um, I was actually speaking to the University of Pretoria the other day, and you realize how much campus life has an influence on the way you think, the 100%. way you look at things, you know. Yeah. It's the first time you're exposed to such a diverse range of people cultures you know mm. um makes you look at life a little bit differently yeah. yeah so at 30 you become one of the younger ceos in the country yeah. well done on that <laughs> big <laughs> achievement uh between university of pretoria to that accolade yeah. w- what happens in the middle there yeah so i mean after i finished my degree uh, i did my honors so like i said i was always, always friends with the smart people so the smart people said they're going to go and lecture for a year and they're like why don't you join us? But no, I'm not smart here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know nothing about lecturing. But I put an application in here. Some call to an interview and they say they seem to want an outlier of a person, you know? Yeah. Not the traditional. <laughs> and they choose me. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm standing in front of 400 people. You know, wow. Trying to do a lecture. And this is somebody who's not very good at public speaking. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I think it was, you know, sometimes you have those profound moments in your life where <laughs> you feel like, this is it, you know, and, and I kind of really had to step up there because mm. I really had to change my personality um, to be able to lecture for a year and push me a lot, you know, mm. took me out of my comfort zone. And like, that one year um, made a lot of difference in my life, yeah, because um, I also learned to work with young people, you okay. know. Um, so so you're, you're kind of, as an academic lecturer or academic trainee, you're kind of a bridge between the main lecturers and the students, you know. I um, see. So you've got to help a lot of them with their personal issues. You've got to help a lot of them with, you know, where they're struggling to cope with curriculum and those kind of things. It was my real exposure of working directly with young people, yeah. you know, and understanding the challenges that they face. And I think a lot of what I did in that year influences what I do now um, at the National Youth Development Agency. Yeah. Then I had to go and finish my articles. Um, so I joined KPMG. Um, the now discredited auditing firm. <laughs> yeah. um, finished my articles there. Uh, and I used to do mostly auditing work. Um, and NYD used to actually be one of my clients. Um, so I got to know the people here, got to know the systems, got to know the processes. While I was minding my own business at KPMG, um, the CFO then here was Katura Mukumba. Yeah. Um, he had just become the CEO. He had a mandate to fix a lot of the problems yeah. that NYD was facing. You all remember days of kissing festivals and those kind of things. Yeah, I do. So, and yeah, and he was looking for a CFO. Um, he gave me a call and said, look, I think you know what's going on here. I need you to come help me. Yeah, and I remember I remember going to my house. So I used to stay on my own, so I went to my house. He called me on a Friday afternoon. 
Um, I went to my parents' house on Friday night and told them, look, they want me to join the NYDA. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the looks of shock on their faces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't have a lot of responsibilities. And it seemed like a really good opportunity. Yeah. Know? And I think we did a lot of good work cleaning up the organization. NYDA got its first clean audit, you know. Um, and we've built on that now to five clean audits. Yeah, and I started to understand a little bit. So I understood the financial aspect of the business. But then I needed to start understanding the the deeper sense of what we do as an organization, you know. Um, me and Katu became closer over time. And three and a half years into it, he was like, he came to visit me in my house. That's Ken. He always comes at weird times. You know? Yeah. So it was a Sunday evening, I remember. Yeah. Uh, and he said, I need to talk to you urgently. <laughs> uh, he came to my house and he said, you know, I'm stepping down from NYDA. I'm done. I'm tired. It's time for somebody new to take over. I'm going to recommend that that person be you, you know? Wow. Yeah. So it's kind of... Surreal. Was that an ambition of yours? Never, never. So it's finance is always my thing, right? Because I'm a numbers guy, you yeah. know? Um, and I was good at that. And I was really enjoying being the numbers person. Um, and some water. No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, yeah. Cool. But yeah, so, so uh, it, it was a surreal moment. Mm. And it was a huge step up, right? Because when you're running finance, you're running... One division yeah, yeah, yeah. with your group of people. Right. Suddenly you're in charge of this entire organization. You know? yeah. Everybody's looking at you. <laughs> and you've got to do things like set strategy and bring on port partners and develop a compact and you know yeah. have values for the organization and report to entire board of directors. But I mean, I used to support Katu in a lot of the work that he used to do. Um, Jeez, where did you get time to make the baby? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it was tough. It was tough. It was tough. But yeah, so we... But we also, we needed to start a family, you know. Um, I was kind of married for about four years by then. Well, no, no, actually, but about three years when we had the baby. So it was important, you know. Uh, these things are also important in life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, one thing led to another, and here I am today, you know, having been CEO for about two years now. Wow, that's amazing. All right, so it's 2020, NYDA, what are we doing? I know you guys are busy with uh, a thousand businesses in a hundred days. You yeah, got- yeah. So, I mean, to, so... South Africa's young people can't be separated from our history, yeah? Um, And I think ever since I've worked in youth development, it's a shame on us that we have the worst youth unemployment rate in the world, you know? You've got all these energetic, passionate young people um, whose energies should be unlocked for the right reasons. Are you talking about me? (laughs) You too. (laughs) But you're employed, which is different, (laughs) So, self-employed. Uh, yeah, so, well, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, so you've got all of these amazing young people, right, who don't know the joy of getting a paycheck or knocking off on a Friday or, you know, getting called for an interview. And um, I think the president himself is very committed to young people and youth development, yeah, and in particular getting them employed. Because being employed is about social mobility, right? One job leads to another job, which leads to, and each time, like yourself, like another, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's important we give young people those opportunities, you know. Um, so what we've come up with this year and for the next five years is the presidential youth employment intervention, you know, which is probably South Africa's most bold and comprehensive plan to tackle youth unemployment, you know, to get young people active in the economy, and the thousand businesses in a hundred days is really the first campaign to kick that off, you know, because you'll know that most people's experiences of a government institution is negative. Yes, yeah? 100%. Going yeah. to home affairs yeah. or getting your license renewed. It's yeah. frustrating. Mm. Government's not known for being efficient and effective. And we want to, as a youth organization, be different, you know, um, be fresher in the way we do things. And we want to be able to show that in a short space of time, we help a lot of young people get their businesses off the ground, you yeah. know? Um, get them supported, get them participating in the economy. And it helps because if you're helping one business, then they can employ other young people. Yeah. I mean, I was telling you, like, when I started, we started recording with an iPad. Yeah. Now I need a cameraman. 100%. And a sound guy, you know. 100%. And we keep on growing. Yeah. Um, so a lot of young people that I speak to seem to not understand how you can get funding from NYDA. Yeah. People don't really know what's the process, what do you do? And I meet a lot of young people that have started businesses, like we've got a segment called Black Friday. 
but that process, they don't seem to be yeah. have any knowledge. Yeah. How do you get funding from? from yeah. That? So I mean, we have multiple touch points to be able to reach young people. Our main area is our service delivery centers. So we have about forty centers throughout the country where you can walk in, um, give your ideas. And we kind of want to do an assessment on where you are in your life, right? Okay. Um, did you finish your matric? Yeah? Not that it matters, to us, yeah. but did you finish your matric? Did you go to university? You know, do you have a diploma? Um, what's your goals for yourself? Do you want to be self-employed? Do you want to have a job? Do you want to volunteer? You know. Um, so, so it's important we get an understanding of what you want as a person. Yeah. But the process for funding specifically is, we've realized there's a big correlation between young people who are trained for an entrepreneurship program um, and those who are not. Yeah? Mm. Um, so, so we run a free business management training course oh, um, wow. that takes you through all the aspects of running a business, marketing, budgeting, uh, producing, yeah, producing financials, how to get your business registered, what's the compliance associated with your business. Yeah? Because you may be really passionate about being a chef and you want to own your own catering company, yeah? but you don't know that you need a certificate from the Department of Health to get mm. off the ground, yeah? Mm. Um, you don't know that you need a tax clearance if you want to do business with government, you know? So our course helps us, helps you to get where you need to be. Yeah? Um, and once you've completed the course, we also test things like self-efficacy and resilience, yeah? Because being an entrepreneur is not easy. Yeah, you know? trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so being able to get you there is important. Um, and then a, a business development officer will help you you know, there used to be a time when we, we said business plans were important, but that's not that much important to us anymore. Okay. You know? So you being able to state your idea and that you've researched your idea and you know where your market is, is something that's much more important to us as an organization. So the centers is probably the best way, but you can also reach us through our call center. Um, you can reach us through our website. Um, our team's running a wonderful initiative now. They have a chat to us feature every day between 10 and 1 o'clock oh, in the nice. next 100 days. Yeah. Any information you need, we can we can provide it to you, you know. Um, so we, we're trying to, we know young people are not homogeneous in how they access services, yeah. Um, and we're trying to reach them through as many channels as possible, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, man. All right, cool. And uh, what are the future plans apart from this uh, um, initiative that you got going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. What are we doing in, in, in future as NYDA? Yeah, so a um, couple of things. I think one is we know everybody can't be self-employed, yeah. right? Um, a lot of young people will need to find jobs in the labor market, yeah? Um, so very soon we're going to put a sayyouth.mobi site out there where young people online will be able to access the they put them in touch with an employment to an education opportunity. Oh, nice. We're going to be putting together five high-tech prototype sites that we hope to will grow to 40 eventually, where a young per person in person can access services of government that also put them in line for a uh, workplace opportunity or an education opportunity. And then we're going to also put together the most comprehensive youth service program South Africa has ever known. Um, it's going to be called the Presidential Youth Service. Yeah. So what we want to do is, you know, um, we strongly believe in young people being citizens of change, uh, active citizens of change, and changing from community upwards. Yeah. Young people organized in communities. Now, um, a lot of public infrastructure is been neglected over time, you know. Um, and if you think back to when you were in school, after school programs played a big role yeah. in, in, in how you developed as a person. Right? So now, now if you go into a township or a rural area, too many young people don't have places to channel their energies after school, you know. Yet you have so many young people who are unemployed who probably have talents around dance or mm. choir mm. or sports. Mm. So we want to create opportunities through youth service where young people can help other young people solve their issues and channel their energy. Yeah? Um, either by running after-school dance clubs, after-school choirs, after-school sports clubs. Yeah? Utilizing existing public infrastructure. You know? mm. Make young people owners of change in their communities. Yeah? Um, and in doing so, they can earn themselves a stipend. Um, they can learn themselves a skill. And they can put themselves on a path towards meaningfully participating in the economy. Wow. Yeah. 
You came up with that, right? <laughs> Me and a group of very <laughs> smart people. Uh, I get that. Most of whom work in our team. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, see, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for taking time yeah. out of your busy schedule. We've been wanting to do this. <laughs> uh, do you still listen to my piano? Uh, I do. I do a little bit. Well, what are you vibing with right now? <laughs> like music-wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Whatever I've been listening to. I'm sure every song is Kabza and Mapuri. So. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a really good song by Quester the other day, but I can't remember what the name was. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And looking back, do you think um, is your dad proud of you? Yeah. Well, so my, my dad is a tough guy, you know. Um, so he doesn't often say that he's proud of me, but I think secretly he probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man. Pleasure, really pleasure. appreciate it. Cool, man. Podcast and Chiliadia. Boom. Cool.